I never considered myself particularly naive, but I'm not so sure after watching this next report. I had no idea what real estate industry was up to, what they were able to and are still able to get away with. And I'm thinking financial industry, Royal Commission 2.0, maybe? Watch this. Hiding auction clearance rates in a falling market, while up to 8 out of 10 sale prices aren't disclosed by agents. It's been another nervous weekend for sellers as auction clearance rates continue to tumble down, now to around 40% amid some of the toughest conditions since the GFC. Real estate data firm Domain noted the steepest fall in Sydney house prices for over 20 years, with substantial drops in Melbourne and other markets. But outside the official data, there are questions over how clearance rates are compiled, as agents are not required to disclose sale prices or how a property was sold. Daniel Ziffer reports. Here we go. Okay, the magic number 2435 is their reserve. For viewers of the block, the sales process couldn't be more transparent. $2,850,000. It is going. It's sold. Oh, by the way, who doesn't think this was a stage or this wasn't stage? Uh, put your comments in the comment section below. I um, I don't know. I don't watch the uh, mainstream media. I don't watch these shows. But, um, you know, to make $500,000 in a month or so uh, is in a falling market is uh, pretty much impossible. Consumers, their picture of the real estate market oh, isn't as clear. 3.475. We'll pass the property in, ladies and gentlemen. To this gentleman right here. After a sale, real estate agents don't have to disclose the price, how the property was sold, or the number of bidders. Vendors can also ask for prices to not be disclosed. When you see house prices rise, uh, and those with vested interest in the real estate market love to tell society how high house prices are rising. But when house prices start to fall, all of a sudden, the transparency falls, out, falls off a cliff. Economist Lindsay David believes Australia's long property boom is unwinding. He points to disclosed sale prices in the prestige Sydney suburb of Rose Bay. Of the 100 properties most recently sold, just 11 disclosed a price. For the 100 before that, 81 disclosed the sale price of the property. Real estate agents are not obliged to disclose whether a property has been sold or not to to the relative to the relevant agencies and on top of that they're not obliged to disclose what the highest bid was or what the actual selling price was so there's a lot of funny stuff going on wait wait i don't mean to repeat what they just said but the real estate agencies and uh, real estate in industry is not obliged to disclose pretty much anything that is the most important about the market that would be like trying to buy, uh, you know, on the stock market, buy uh, shares of Telstra or Commonwealth Bank, one of the most liquid uh, stocks out there, and you don't know what the price is. Like Telstra today is probably, I think, is like three dollars eleven, right? And imagine if you wanted to buy it, but you don't know what somebody paid before, just before you uh, a second ago, a minute ago, in the case of the stock market, or yesterday. Or three months ago, six months ago, you don't know what somebody paid for it, so you can kind of make a judgment of where the market currently is. That's what the real estate market currently is like, and it has been, apparently, for a long time. Maybe I am naive. Companies like Domain and CoreLogic, formerly known as RP Data, capture millions of points of data about Australia's property market. One of the key ones is that sale prices are listed when land titles are transferred through the valuer general of each state and territory. When you think about the data that is collected, the, the data that comes from the valuer general is seen as uh, gospel. This is the firm data of a sale price. But we do use other methods to collect an indicative sale price as well. First time at 999 Companies like Domain and CoreLogic employ people to attend auctions and keep tabs on local markets. Dr Powell says the company's methodology is rigorous and the same one used by the Australian Bureau of Statistics. Australians are obsessed by property. We hold lots of auctions and because our land titles are transferred through a government body, we've got really strong information about medium and long-term changes in the price of houses. 
but weekly clearance rates can be affected by things like a long weekend, bad weather or even sporting events. Monthly clearance rates give a, a better indication overall of, of what's occurring within these auction-centric markets. But I think I, you know, I will stress the point there is a strong correlation between price appreciation and those clearance rates, particularly for Sydney and Melbourne. In some states, the value of generals can take up to six months to give you the full data sets. Uh, and we move in a market that uh, changes you know, weekly, monthly, and we need to have more regular data. So that's why... Uh, ourselves and, and other groups go to the industry and say we need this quality data uh, at, a, at a faster pace than what we can get from, uh, from the Valuer General's department. For consumers, the falling market and any sellers holding back information may bring a surprising reward. A lack of transparency in the real estate industry definitely shoots its, helps shoot itself in the foot. The big problem you have is when you have a lot of home buyers out there completely clueless to what a particular housing market is doing, well, it's pretty safe for them to turn around to these agents who are selling these properties and just give them a low ball offer. A low ball offer is exactly what they need in my humble opinion. Again, everything I say in this video on my channel is not financial advice, not that you would want to take it from someone who's in the IT industry, uh, but it's my opinion solely and this whole channel is my little project little um hobby to be honest and i appreciate your uh watching it but the market won't ever be as clear as it is on tv daniel ziffer there more cranes on the horizon have pushed victoria to the top spot on comsec's latest national economic performance rankings okay so more cranes on the horizon this is a completely different story i didn't even expect it to report on it or to bring it to you but uh and notice how the cranes in the sky are the barometer of the economy so the more cranes the more construction the more property development as if there's nothing else in this country that we do except exporting dirt to china uh, and i think i just answered the question maybe a bit of finance but that's about it it's all about real estate so if that stops the employment stops the interest rates go up and uh, because there's too many properties up there on the market it all implodes but let's hear it out that's thanks to strong construction activity and the lowest jobless rate in a decade new south wales is close behind with the act in third tasmania's economic star continues to rise sitting on fourth spot but closing the gap south australia is in fifth followed by Queensland, the Northern Territory, and Western Australia. Tasmanian economic star. I mean, no disrespect to uh, Tasmania, but uh, all they have at the moment is uh, Sydney and Melbourne people cashing out of their properties uh, and or uh, people looking to buy in Sydney and Melbourne still thinking it's too expensive and going and uh, moving money, moving capital into tasmania what else is going on in tasmania i haven't heard any development any new factories being open any new findings of uh, natural resources or anything like that so call me skeptical but it's just the real estate money moving around the country right now at the moment okay let's say you don't believe this story what about this next one Nervous sellers and buyers are holding firm as the real estate market across the country continues to soften. Less homes are being listed this spring compared to last year, with fears prices are set to plummet even further. Catalina Flores has more. The last weekend in October is normally one of the biggest auction days of the year, but fewer homes are up for grabs this Super Saturday compared to last spring, with buyers and sellers waiting it out as prices fall. There's a lot of, I guess, fear and loathing out there, particularly from sellers. We are seeing the market uh, track backward uh, quite substantially. There's still activity, though. More than 1,600 homes went under the hammer this week in Melbourne. 700. 50 auctions were held in Sydney, more than 140 in Brisbane, 126 in Adelaide, almost 100 in Canberra and 31 in Perth. But they're taking longer to sell. The clearance rates dropping from around 70% last year to 46% this year. It's a buyer market at the moment and uh, 
um, not many uh, people willing to pay much price for the property. The crisis in confidence doesn't make sense to many given there are more people now in jobs, there's strong migration and record low interest rates are expected to remain that way. So there are so many positive factors that it is a mindset more than anything else but these things are very difficult to change so perhaps a year to run before we start to get a lift in confidence. This five bedroom home in Sydney's northwest bucking the trend. Congratulations sir, well bought. Selling today above the reserve. These sort of auctions have become the exception nowadays. A good sign for sellers in a cooling market as buyers plan their next move to take advantage of the conditions. Uh, I think um, it's a good time to wait. Catalina Flores. It's a good time to wait is uh, well summed up at the end of that report, in my opinion. Um, I think everyone's sitting on their hands yet. Uh, remember how they told us the property is always going to go up as long as the interest rates are low. Well, we got that sorted. They're still low. Uh, as long as we got strong uh, immigration, that's plentiful. And as long as the job numbers are strong, so we've got the lowest unemployment on record, yet nobody's buying. So the question is who can hold out more and longer? Uh, people who are trying to sell, uh, can, they, can the vendors hold back? Uh, and I have heard some anecdotal evidence from, again, some friends and whose friends are trying to sell uh, they couldn't get what they wanted, what they were able to get three, six months ago, 12 months ago, and what the market value of it was. So they're just going to go back and uh, uh, lease it out. Fair enough. Uh, but how long can they wait? Because I think the people who are trying to buy with uh, approved finance, who's, by the way, financial situation and, and potential to uh, raise capital is diminishing Who's going to wait for longer? I think that people trying to buy are just going to wait and wait and wait until something turns around, uh, but it's not likely to. So it keeps going down. It keeps going backwards. Uh, so the confidence is diminishing. Everyone's waiting. The longer the waiting game happens, uh, the further the prices are going to fall. And my um, not financial advice, but opinion and um, something I would recommend to people who are trying to sell is to sell now. Unless they don't have to and they're, they're, they're happy to keep it for another 3, 5, 10 years. But I doubt that anyone who's trying to put their uh, property on for sale is um, likely to want to wait that long. Otherwise, they wouldn't have been trying to put it up for sale um, in the first place, i.e. they've got some sort of reason, uh, motivation, they need the money buying something else uh, moving money somewhere else so uh, that's my take on it uh, thank you for watching and i'll talk to you in the next video